Hi everyone, so today I'm going to showcase a tutorial on how you can actually create a graphs uh, like this using grid. So the idea is that uh, in Notion, so the database, every time you want to share for different customers, so in our use case here, we have something called a customer database. And then we have two customers here, so customer A, customer B. So usually one of the very common things that people waste out is just that you want to filter the customers, you want to just filter it as customer A, for example. And then you want to share just to your customer, right? So you don't want it, they to see other people's uh, invoice, but that is not possible using Notion itself, at least not for now. So there are other tools like, for example, Vision, which is like a third-party tool to create it. But then today I'm going to do a tutorial on just to showcase how you can actually use Grid to create this similar uh, effects. So in our use case here, so we're actually selecting, if I'm not mistaken, let me see. Yeah, we're selecting company A, so you can see like invoice one to six, right? And then one to six and then we have like a monthly charts here so January to December and then how, how much uh, they spend and then the invoice here so and then the status so yeah I'm gonna show you how this can be done uh, in grid so first of all I, I don't think I'll go through the uh, how you can create a notion database but just a quick walkthrough of what we already have so let me just unlock this just to make sure that we can remove this as well Okay, so basically we have uh, the name, the customer. So for customer, I'm just using as a drop down. So for grid, if my understanding currently is that you can't, you cannot use like a relation database. They are working on it, but for now it has to be a, like a selection. And then we have the amount here, so just in US dollar, and then the dates, and then the processing status. So basically, it's just that it's not started processing, but in full. And then there's another hidden column that I've created just to show you. So let me just show you month. So basically, it's just a column formula to write down the dates and ex exchange it into month. So in February, April, March. So you can see like it matched this one. So we will need to uh, reference it later, which is why we have this. But for now, we don't need this though. We just can hide this. All right. So let me show you how it works in grid first. So now that we are in grid, so I'm going to show you earlier that I showed you the charts for company A, right? So the most easiest way you can copy and create another one is just select the three dot, make a copy, and then just go inside. Once I'm here, so I can just rename it, just make sure that I can recognize. So this will be company B. And then you can see there's uh, a filter here. You can see like, you can just change it to company B. And you can see it's actually automatically being updated so next is you can just select share and then more options select embed get embed code copy embed and then we can go back to notion now that we're in notion just come down here so this example for company b you have to type um, embed first and then just paste the link embed link And you can kind of adjust it uh, just to make it larger so that it's visible. Okay, so there you have it. So this is how you can kind of copy uh, and create like another cut for your customers individually. So by right, once you set it up everything, it just takes around like one to two minutes at most. And you have kind of, you can have like a customer individual page inside Notion just to share with them. Okay, so that's the demo. So for now, I'm going to show you how you can actually build it. So now we're in Grid. So if it's first time using it, so grid is actually free for use. So there are some like paid uh, advantage, for example, like you can hide the logos and you can customize the colors. But in general, it's more than enough like for free users. And then one of the advantage of grid is that it actually integrates with uh, Notion, which I'm going to show you uh, shortly. So create new documents. And then they'll ask you like start a grid sheet, so add existing data. So I'll add existing data. So in your case, you probably have to select Notion if it's your first time using it, right? And then you are prompt to Notion here. You have to select pages. So you have to select the page that you want to share uh, with Grid. So in our case, like I want to connect with the customer database, right? Which I have already connected. So I'll skip this part. But for your case, you just have to select your database and then select allow access. For me, I'll just go back. Okay, so since I already connected, I'll just select this, this is my main uh, workspace, and then select the database that one, customer database. 
and that's it. So once you connect it, you can see there's a database pop up here. So if you're familiar with Excel, like or Google Sheets, it's basically the same thing. And this data is actually uh, what we have currently in our Notion. So I can actually change it because it's actually synced to Notion itself. So yeah, so this is where we're going to start doing our charts and our graphs. So let me just kind of go back and see what we have. So in terms of what we already have, right? So we're going to create like a graphs here. So from January to December, and then like a table here, just for the tables. And then a table here, just to let the customer see their invoice. So let's start by the graph first. So one thing about grid is that if they've used like tools like Notion to charts or other similar tools, it's a bit more complex. I would say even quite a lot. If you're not familiar with like Google Sheets, like using formulas, queries. So there are some like steps involved. So for today, I'm going to slowly walk through with you. And then if you want more, uh, yep. And then you have more questions, if you have more questions asked, right? I can always help you to go through it later in separate videos. But for today, it's more of an introductory uh, course to just show you how it can be done. All right. So at the left side here, you have something called grid sheet. So just like this. So this grid sheet is basically Google Sheets. It helps you to connect with other uh, data available in your Notion database because we can't actually change anything here. That's why we have to change something from here. So first of all, let's do the charts. So if you have used um, Google Sheets before, Excel before, so when we want to create the charts, right? So currently I need uh, one example here. So let me just start from here. So I want one column we call month. And then one column is called sum. So basically just a total sum of for that month. And then we can just write down the and then we can just write down the month. So now that we have write down all the months, so we just do like a sum if of how we usually do it. But before that, we have to do one more thing, just write down this selection. So for now I just type uh, company here, company A. So then we can start doing our sum ifs, just like how we're using Google Sheets and Excel. So I just type some ifs, you can see there's a prompt here, and then just bracket. One of the downside of our grid, at least at this moment, is that it doesn't show you the prompts on how you can actually use uh, all these formulas. So normally I'll just go to Google and then just kind of find like some ifs Google Sheets. So it kind of show you the prompt on how you can use it. But for now, since I already memorized it, so basically for some ifs, so the first thing you need to do is just select the columns that you need to sum. So we go to Notion database. And then we select column B, just click this. So it re reference the whole column. And then the second thing is we need to reference the criteria. So what are we searching for right? that we want to filter? So first thing is the customer. So we can just select column C. So I write a comma before that, column C, and then comma again. So what do you want to reference comma, uh, column C, right? So it's the company that we wrote out earlier. So it's A2, and then just comma again. So this is where we select our second criteria. So we can go back to Notion database. So next one we want to select is the month. So basically the one in column E. We'll select this one and then comma again. And then go back to grid sheet. So in this case, your criteria will be January. So C2 and then just click enter. So you can see like you automatically calculated 900. So there are a few things that you need to do here. So first thing is that we want to make sure that it's always referencing A2. So if you're familiar with uh, Google Sheets, you always use this uh, dollar sign. So once you select this, you just maintain stacking. And then the reason why we have to do it is that we want to auto-populate the formula. So once you drag down, it doesn't change the company A. Okay, as you can see, like it's automatically being populated now, like for every 1,003, 500, 400. And just to make sure it's working, so let me just type here company B. You can see it's actually changing. And then you put company C, which is not existing. So it's not all right. So let's think with company A first. So that's the first table that we have. So now let's just go back to create our charts now. So in order to create a chart in grid, so first thing is there are two ways you can do it. Either you can use the plus button 
of your from Notion, you can just slash, and then they'll show you a list of things, charts, elements that you can create. So our case, we just use a simple try and true column chart here. So select column chart. And then at the right side here, there's a pop-up here. So first thing they ask you to select is the data. So the data is like which one you're referencing. So in our case, we want to reference um, this part, the column D, the sum. So I can just select the whole column. So this will be our data. And then X has its label. So X basically is the horizontal label. Yep, I'm correct. So basically you want to show instead of 1 to 13, right? So you want to show uh, January to December. So what you can do is select this. And then it's actually showing uh, and that's actually showing uh, January to December but the only problem is that we have a month here so what you can do is you can just select here C2 just make sure that it starts from 2 am I correct though? So the only problem is that it actually doesn't look good like when you actually select here there's like a month here so i haven't found like the best solution but basically what you can do is you can just do something like this but for this one it's label right you can just select until december and then for the sum because it's starting from the top so there's a problem as well so we need to start from here until this part a Okay, so yeah, so you can see like January to December, so that's how it's been selected. And then you can kind of name your chart's name like... Yeah. So where you name the name, I have the emoji here, it's monthly, okay. And the next thing is you can kind of customize the colors. For example, there's a customization button here, just select this. And then color by point, so just make it more interesting. You can actually even select the color palette. I prefer the tropical one, so I'll stick with this. And then that's it. So basically that's how we created the bar chart here. And then next one you want to create is the tables. So it's basically showing the tables by the company that we select. And then what we need is the name, the status, and the amount. So let's go back to grid. So here is where it gets a bit more complicated if you're not used to using query in Google Sheets or Excel. So basically, query is kind of like a SQL language, so SQL. It helps you to kind of get data from uh, the da database here, the tables, without using formula. Because sometimes some of them is like a bit more complex, you want to do filters. Of course, I can use some ifs here, but there are some cases that we actually can't really generate it. So let me just show you a little bit of how it looks like first. First, you type, just type query, and then just uh, open the close bracket. And then first of all, you have to reference the data set you want to select. So in our case, we can just select the whole data, database, A to F, and then comma, and then you want to show, uh, want to, and then you want to select which column that you want to show in your table. So in our case, we want name, we want amount, and then we want the status. So let's see. So you want A. No, first you have to, you have to type select first. So it's a must. It's like a syntax for you. So we want to show A first, comma, and then we want to show status first. So say this is E, F, F, and then B. So if everything is correct now, if I just type enter, it should show. Oh yeah, I forgot to put like a bracket up here. Okay, so that's how you kind of see like I can actually generate the table here, just referencing from Notion, right? So it's only showing for name, status, and amount. For next step is that I don't want them to show everything, right? I only want it to show for company A. So how I can do that is that, and then after B, you type where? And then what do you want to reference? So which one is actually company? So I think it's, go back here. So column C, you want to make sure that it's filtered for the company A that we're selecting. So which is why we're going to type where C equals to, and then to dot here, company A. Okay. So now you can see that it's only showing for data for company A. So that's how it can kind of works. 
But for now, you can see like if you just change this, it's actually not referencing it properly because it's just a static, right? So the last steps we have to do is just make sure we're referencing uh, cell A2. So how we can do that is, let me just do it again. So we can do another one, two of these dot. I'm not sure what you call, kind of forgot. And then you have to do this two N sign. Then just like A2. So once that's done, you can see automatically it's referencing to this uh, cell A2. So hopefully you can see it. I'll try to zoom in, zoom in the video later. So company A, that's how we have it. Okay, so just for the last two steps more, is we can create a table now. So slash again, if you're used to Notion. And then you can go down. I think they should have table. Did I miss it? Or you can just type table here. And they just show up here. Table. And then they ask for your data. So basically you just want all this data here, right? So you can do F to H. This is how you can have the data here. And then we can have like maybe invoice. And then the rest is like, what else we want? Number format. You can just make sure that it's like this currency is dollar. And then I think that's about it. Don't think you can change color. Uh, I think maybe this looks better. I'm not too sure. Okay, now that we have this. Maybe I prefer alternating color though. It's kind of like you can see the columns. Why is it not showing anymore? Alternating color. Okay, it's showing now. And then the next thing we can do is. Yep, this is done. So the last thing we can do is just make sure that uh, we have something called to reference this uh, company A here. So what you can do is here that we can select. So just do slash. So and then I'll find this thing called input field. And then make sure it's referencing the company A. And then there's another thing that we can do is just make sure that the visibility is off. So the idea is that when you turn off the invisibility. So let me just show you an example. Now that we can see the uh, text here, right? can go in here and disappear and then we can come out so that's when we show the embed it wouldn't appear uh, to other people but then for our case like we can just easily change it here as well company B company C so that we don't have to uh, go back to the data okay so let's just type this as company A example so last step so like I showed you earlier just click share and then more option and then embed, get embed codes, copy, and then go back to Notion. Just do one more time just to show you. Then embed again, and then paste the link, embed link. Okay, so let's drag it down. All right, so there you have it. So if you like the tutorial, so be sure to give it a like and subscribe and let me know what other things that you would like to know more about Greed. I'm currently learning myself as well. I'm very interested to share. And also I'm hosting, uh, planning to host like a webinar. So I'll be collaborating with Greed. So it'll be around uh, middle of March or end of March. I'll let you know the dates again. But yeah, thanks for watching. Goodbye.